So hopefully from example R1, you could tell that there is some kind of relationship between logarithms and exponentials. So to explore that relationship, let's scroll down to the bottom of page two. Okay, so we're going to explore the relationship between exponential and logarithmic functions. Okay, here it is. The functions f of x is equal to a to the x and g of x is equal to log base a of x are inverse functions. Okay, so again, here is the key relationship. Okay, the function a to the x and the function log base a of x their inverse functions. Okay, so for example, okay, if I gave you the function two to the x, okay, that's an exponential function of base two, okay, its inverse function is going to be log base two of x, okay, so it's basically the log function that has the same base, okay, or if I gave you f of x is equal to five to the x, okay, the inverse function is going to be log base five of x and so on, okay? So since in calculus, you are uh, most often going to encounter uh, base 10 logarithms or base e logarithms, we're gonna take a look at those two exponential and logarithmic functions, okay? So in example R2, we're gonna graph each pair of inverse functions on the same grid. In part A, we're gonna start with the exponential function f of x is equal to e to the x, and we're also going to graph its inverse function, which is the natural log of x, okay? So again, if you have e to the x, that's an ex exponential function of base e, Okay, its inverse function is going to be the logarithmic function of the same base, which is natural log, okay? All right, so if you don't know what a uh, graph looks like, uh, you just start off by making a table of values, or you could just, you know, pop this into your calculator. I'm going to do it by hand. Um, so I'm going to graph the exponential first, okay, because there's a shortcut for getting the logarithm. So I'm just gonna make a table of values. So what I'm gonna do is we are in charge of X. We're allowed to pick the inputs. We're gonna plug each one in to the exponential piece to get our Y values. And then we're gonna, that'll give us a pair of XY, or that'll give us an XY pair to plot to get our points, okay? Um, right now I'm just graphing the exponential piece and then we'll talk about how to get the logarithmic function, okay? All right, I am going to plug in a couple of things for X. I'll pick one and two. Um, I'm gonna even pick zero and something negative. Okay, so I wanna get a wide variety of X values. So I'm picking something positive, something negative and zero. Okay, I'll start with the positive stuff first. So basically I'm gonna plug in one for X, E to the first power. We know that's about 2.71. Okay, so I need to plot the point one 2.71. Okay, we're just going to have to eyeball this. We're going to say that's about right here. Okay, and then I'm going to plug in x equals 2. So that's going to be e squared. Okay, I'm going to go to my calculator. Uh, e squared is about 7.39. Okay, so now I've got to plot about 2, or the point's going to be x equals 2, and then the y value is going to be about point. It's going to be about 7.39, okay? That's going to be maybe about right here, okay? We could go to x equals 3 to get e to the third power, but at that point, we're going to be off the grid because the y value would be over 20, okay? So I'll just go ahead and jot that down, but I am not going to plot the point because it's not going to fit on the grid, okay? So then I'm gonna go the other direction for X. I'm gonna plug in zero, E to the zero. Anything to the zero power is one. So this graph will go through the point zero, one. All right, and then I'm gonna plug in negative one. Okay, E to the negative one. Okay, that is going to be one over E to the first power, okay? So, you know, to calculate this, you can just go to the straight calculator. You're going to go straight to the calculator and get e to the negative one. Okay. 
This is the same thing as 1 over e to the first power. Okay, so you're going to see that the y value here is about 0.37. Okay, so we'll say this is about 0.37. So we can plot negative 1.37. Okay, that's going to be about right here. Okay, now I'm going to connect the dots. What the graph of e to the x looks like in actually any exponential function, if I connect the dots to the right, you're going to see that one side grows very quickly. Okay, the other side levels off somewhere. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Okay, if you kept plugging in negative numbers, your y values are going to be positive, but they're going to be extremely teeny, teeny, teeny. Okay, so what happens here, this is the graph of e to the x. Okay, one side rises very quickly, the other side levels off somewhere, and it's leveling off here at the x axis. Okay, the x axis is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, now since the natural log function is the inverse function of e to the x, okay, we can easily come up with points on the graph of natural log of x. I'm going to put natural log of x in red, different color here, okay? So, rule from algebra, okay? If you have inverse functions, okay, and you have the graph of one of the functions, to get the points on the graph of the other function, all you have to do is interchange x and y, okay? So, I'm just going to write down points that we need to plot for natural log of x, okay? The point negative 1.37 just interchange x and y, okay? That's going to be 0.37, negative 1. That's going to be a point on the graph of natural log of x, okay? We're just going to have to eyeball it. It's going to be about right here, okay? Then switch the next point. Instead of 0, 1, natural log of x is going to go through 1, 0. That's right here, okay? Switch the next xy pair, okay? 2.71, 1. 1. Okay, that's going to appear on the graph of natural log of x. Okay, so 2.711, going to have to eyeball it. Okay, and then I'll take that last point and interchange it. So 2, 7.39 becomes 7.39, 2. And if I eyeball that, that's going to be about right here. Okay, so these red dots fall on the graph of the natural log of x. Okay. A logarithmic function behaves opposite an exponential function. One side is going to climb very slowly and the other side is going to fall flat somewhere. So this one, instead of uh, the exponential has a horizontal asymptote, the logarithmic function is going to have a vertical asymptote somewhere. Okay, so you can see here are the two functions. Okay. They are mirror images of each other about the line y equals x. Okay, that is a rule of inverse functions. Okay, so if I draw in the line y equals x in green here, okay, uh, if you fold your sheet of paper along this green line, the blue graph will lie on top of the red graph. Okay, all right, you can see a similar kind of relationship if we did the same thing for f of x equals 10 to the x and its inverse function g of x is equal to log base 10 of x okay we'll do it the same way okay i'm going to make a table of values to graph the exponential function okay i'll use the same x values negative 1 0 1 and 2 okay um, plug that into the exponential piece okay so i'll start with uh, plugging in x equals 1 so 10 to the first power is just 10 so this graph is going to go through 1, 10. That's right here. Okay, if I plug in 2 for x, that's going to give me 10 squared, which is 100. So we plot 2, 100. That's way off the chart. Okay, so I'm not going to plot it. Uh, I'll go to x equals 0 now. So 10 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So this graph also goes through 0, 1, which is right here. And then I'll plug in negative 1 for x. This is going to be 10 to the negative 1. That's 1 over 10 to the first power. So that's 1 tenth, which is 0.1. So I need to plot negative 1, 0.1. Okay, and you could keep plugging in negative numbers. Okay, but 
this exponential function is going to behave just like e to the x did. Okay, so basically one side is going to climb very quickly. And then the other side here is going to level off somewhere. Okay, again at the x-axis. Okay, do not assume that all exponential functions level off at the x-axis. Okay, simple ones like these do. Okay, but they are just going to level off somewhere. It doesn't have to be the x-axis. Okay, so this is the graph of 10 to the x. Okay, we have three points on its graph. So to get points on the graph of the inverse function, inverse function, which is log base 10 of x, or just log x, okay, just switch the x, y pairs, okay, so negative 1.1, switch x and y, we're going to plot 0.1, negative 1, okay, eyeball that, that's going to be about right here, okay, the 0 0.01 will get transported to 1, 0, and then 110 on the exponential becomes 10, 1 on the logarithmic equation, okay? And then 102, okay? Again, that's going to be off the chart, okay? But log of x, that graph, again, one side will climb very slowly, and the other side will level off somewhere. Uh, it'll have a vertical asymptote, okay? Here, again, it's at the y-axis, okay? Again, logarithms, are, those functions are going to have a vertical asymptote somewhere, okay? The simple ones have the vertical asymptote at the y-axis, okay? Again, if you have a more complicated logarithmic function, you'll have a vertical asymptote somewhere. It won't necessarily be the y-axis, okay? Again, uh, because... 10 to the x and log of x are inverse functions. They are mirror images of each other about this line y equals x. Okay, if we fold our sheet of paper along this green line, uh, the blue graph will lie directly on top of the red graph. Okay, so hopefully this, you know, helped you remember some things about the relationship between an exponential function and its inverse logarithmic function.